In this week's episode, I thought I'd share some tools I use in my own web development. Yeah, it's going to be one of those episodes. Very technical, sort of. <laughs> More in a moment. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. I'm a believer in the KISS principle when it comes to programming, data design, and web development. I like to rock and roll all night and party every day. Uh, no, wait, sorry. <laughs> I mean, keep it simple. Stupid. <laughs> On many of the projects I've done, I found that the most complicated idea can be planned, organized, and prioritized to keep the development simple. And by keeping it simple, I can actually get quite a bit of a project done quicker. And believe me, that makes for a happy client. So I thought today I would share a few of the tools that I've been using to help simplify my web development. Now, if you're new to building websites, these tools will help you design a nice looking website with all the back end code needed for the modern web. If you're an expert, you've probably already looked at the, or are currently using these tools. So if there's any tool, library, or framework I didn't mention that you think will help the new to moderate web developer, please let us know in the comment. Now I'm just going to give a brief description on what each tool does. You'll be able to learn all about them at their respective websites, all of which I will have linked in the all-important show notes. <laughs> so please check those out after you've listened at blogoklahoma.net. First off, I do most of my coding in a basic text editor. I find I have more control over what I'm building. I could use one of those visual web builders where you would drag and drop elements into place, but I find those don't give me the flexibility I need for my style of building. You see, I think in code. Just like a musician reads notes off sheet music, I can look at HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and know what it does and what it's going to look like. So the primary text editor I use is called Notepad++. It's a free, powerful text editor from Windows. It has just about anything a code writer would need. Another editor that I've started to use more and more is called Atom. It's also free, but it's multi-platform. It also has everything you need to write code, but it has a few different functions that don't come native to Notepad++. I find myself going back and forth between these two, so during a typical workday, I have both of these open all day long. Now when it comes to the code itself, I find more often than not that I start with the Bootstrap Framework and jQuery JavaScript Library. These two are a lifesaver. They give you a great foundation to build on because there's no point in reinventing things when you don't have to. Bootstrap is a popular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript framework for developing responsive web projects. It also comes with all the basic design elements you'll need to build a nice looking website. jQuery is a small, fast, and feature-rich JavaScript library. It makes complicated things like HTML, document manipulation, event handling, animation, AJAX, much, much simpler. And it uses a very easy to use code that works on just about all the browsers. Bootstrap does come with a nice looking icon set, but uh, you'll want something that's even more and even more easier to use. So check out Font Awesome. Font Awesome is a free set of icons specially designed for websites and application. Now when you're working on a project, there are often times you'll have to wait on the graphics or copy edit teams to get their stuff done. If it's possible, don't wait on them. Just put in some placeholder images and text to get your coding done. Placehold it <laughs> is a quick, simple image placeholder service. All you do is point your image source to their URL with a size parameter and you've got a simple filler image. HTML.ibsen is a lorem ibsen text filler service. What it does is it generates some formatted nonsense text. All you got to do is copy it 
paste it into place, get your project done, and when somebody finally gives you the text you need, you just replace it. Very handy. And finally, for those times when you just can't get something to work, where something isn't displaying right, or it's crashing, or you just can't figure out why, really, don't beat your head on your desk after you've read that reference manual for the nth time. Go ask someone. <laughs> Stack Overflow is a question and answer site for programmers. Trust me when I say if you've had the problem, somebody else has had it too, and they've most likely posted and received an answer at Stack Overflow. Well, that's it for now. Remember, I'll have a link to all of these in the show notes. And these are just a few of the tools I have in my code building toolbox. And I'm sure when you learn and are developing your projects, you're going to have even more. And I hope the ones I've introduced you to today help you in your next development project. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Contact information at the end of this podcast. And always, happy coding. Sorry the episodes haven't been coming out regularly lately. Besides having a much-needed holiday weekend back there, um, I've managed to come down with a cold and cough that wants to just hang around. <laughs> Even before I started recording this episode, I had a coughing fit that I thought I was going to miss another podcast. <laughs> uh, I think I'm okay now, though. My voice still feels a bit rough. Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to sound on your end. Who knows? Maybe this is the best I've ever sounded on the podcast. <laughs> Um, I also wanted to let you know that the episode schedule might be interrupted even more this fall. My project list at work has grown and it's keeping me even more busy than I normally am. And over the next few months, I'll likely miss another episode or two. Hopefully not in a row. If things work out, I shouldn't miss any episodes. But, you know, <laughs> you've been warned. <laughs> be sure to follow me on social media and I'll be sure to post a notice if and when I miss another episode. Um, this week's topic was inspired by something I originally wrote as part of my own blog month challenge I did last December. Now, what is the blog month challenge, you ask? The blog month challenge is actually simple. Post something to your blog every day for an entire month. The overall goal is to write something. The blog month challenge gives you an opportunity or an excuse to improve your writing skills and expand your creativity. It doesn't matter what you post. What matters is you have fun and you write something. If you would like to know more about the Blog Month Challenge, visit blogoklahoma.com slash blog month. And do let us know if you take up the Blog Month Challenge. In the months to come, use the hashtag blog month. Um, I recently closed the Blog Oklahoma back channel telegram group due to lack of participation. <laughs> well, these things happen. Telegram's relatively new and not everybody's on it yet. <laughs> However, I am not quite ready to give up on Telegram quite yet for use here at Blog Oklahoma. The public group didn't work out, but the new channel feature might work out better. <laughs> so I've launched the Blog Oklahoma channel for news and information from Blog Oklahoma and the Blog Oklahoma podcast for users of Telegram. Our channel can be subscribed to at telegram.me slash blog Oklahoma. And if you're interested in a good messaging service that I'm highly recommending, please check out Telegram. You can get the app at telegram.org. I'm happy to announce as of September 27, 2015, Blog Oklahoma has 889 registered Oklahoma bloggers. <laughs> your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma, and hopefully I'll be over this cold soon. Until next time.